Now, Media Sam, I'm sure you all know him, British born American journalist who's been doing some pretty superb journalism over Palestine, as he's been doing, I'd say, some pretty superb journalism for a long time now. Now, I've known him for many years, cards on the table. I suppose I'm something of a of a fanboy. Now, the only time I've got frustrated with him is when he left his shores for the United States back in 2015, the little scamp. I felt like he was such an important voice here. It was a big loss for, for, for progressive journalism, if you like, but he was kicking ass over the Atlantic, so I guess I couldn't really begrudge him for it. Now, the reason that he's so important in the US ecosystem is that, while on the one hand, you've got Fox News, I think we can safely say an aggressively right-wing political machine, rather than a broadcaster attempting to inform and educate his viewers about the world around them, the liberal equivalents can be, how do we put it, maybe slightly deferential to the democratic establishment and ineffective at aggressively taking on the lethal threat of the rising US far right. Now, since the war began, no mainstream broadcast in the US has been so effective as Mehdi at challenging the narrative over pa Israel's onslaught against Palestine. Now, that matters. That matters actually a lot. A poll last month showed, well, alas, in the US, slightly more Americans than not back Israel's onslaught, 45% disapprove compared to 50% who approve. And those 45% are denied effective representation. Indeed, that particularly goes for Democrat voters, 63% of whom disapprove compared to 36% who approve. If you look at Americans under 35, 67% disapprove, 30% approve. People of colour, 64% disapprove, 30% approve. And women, 52% disapprove, 44% approve. So MSNBC, who Mehdi was a host for, is supposed to be the quote-unquote more progressive of the news channels. Um, according to a 2019 Pew Research Centre survey, 95% of those who mentioned MSNBC as the main source of political news identity um, identify as uh, Democrats. Like a lot of broadcasters everywhere, though, it's got a problem attracting younger audiences who get their news increasingly from other sources like YouTube, hi, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, you get the picture. Anyway, clearly someone like Mehdi should be important to a broadcasting news service like MSNBC, not least because younger Americans are the most progressive generation ever. And a lot of the deferential approach of certain liberal journalists to the democratic establishment doesn't maybe go down so, quite so well with them. And Mehdi challenges all politicians. Now, they're the future, after all, that generation. He's also one of the only Muslim anchors on US television. And let's face it, journalism at the top on both sides of the Atlantic is hardly representative of our increasingly diverse nations. So, what did MNSBC decide to do? They fired Mehdi. They cancelled his weekend uh, show, the Mehdi Hassan show, and instead demoted him to a... Uh, on-screen uh, camera analyst and guest host. Now, look, let's just park the politics of all of this. There's no better interviewer than Mehdi, for my money. This isn't just me showering a bit of love on someone I've got deep admiration for. Literally name some better interviewers. He's forensic. Pretty razor sharp, I'd say. Encyclopedic knowledge. Doesn't let his subject worm their way out. Do not get your facts wrong with this guy. He will take you down. Let me just hit you with a clip from this old classic of him cornering a... Trump supporter to give you a little flavor. The president lies daily, multiple times. When he says we're the only country in the world where a person comes in and has a baby, and that baby is essentially a citizen of the United States, is that true or false? No, it's false. It's a misstatement. That means doesn't a mean it's a lie. OK. OK. Uh, he said there were riots going on in California against illegal immigration and so-called sanctuary cities. Uh, were there any riots in California? Oh, yes, there were. There were a lot of civil disturbances. Where were the a riots? Lot, where were the riots? Can you tell me where Oakland, they were? Oakland, California. There, was, there were street skirmishes in um, Los Angeles. Oh, yeah, no, that's a no, fact. The I, no, no, hold that's on. A, the spokesman for the California Police Chiefs Association says there, was no, there were no riots taking yeah. place as a result of sanctuary city policy. There were no riots. He just made it up. When he was asked to say where they were, he said, go look for them. I can give you many more. He said during the campaign that there's six to seven steel facilities that are going to be opened up. There are no. U.S. Steel has not announced any facilities. Why did he say they've announced new facilities? That's a lie, isn't it? No, it isn't, because there are, there are a lot of companies opening up. There are steel facilities that are going to be opening up, or I think no, no, they, they sorry, actually want sorry, to open Stephen, up Sorry, Stephen, that's not what he said. I know, you, I, I know it's difficult for you. I know you want to try and defend him. Now, how many establishment liberal U.S. journalists can you think of who could pull that off? And he's applied this approach to Israel's onslaught against Gaza. Now, first of all, in the No news website, Semaphore reported a week or so after the 7th of October Hamas attack on Israel, and I quote... MSNBC has quietly taken three of its Muslim broadcasters out of the anchor's chair since Hamas's attack on Israel last Saturday amid America's wave of sympathy for Israeli terror victims. So that meant their shows weren't aired, even if some punditry was allowed. The article added, 
Some staff at MSNBC have been concerned by the moves, feeling all three hosts have some of the deepest knowledge of the conflict. MSNBC says these shifts are coincidental and the three continue to appear on air to report and provide analysis. Obviously, that's not the same as shaping the show. Now, how dodgy is that? Let's be honest. What were the establishment of that broadcasting news service thinking? The article further suggested the moves come as MSNBC, like the Democratic Party, to which it's often aligned, has swung into intense solidarity with Israel after the murderous Hamas attacks. That's an important point here, that the Democratic establishment, which MSNBC is so intertwined with, has mobilised behind Israel's onslaught, and Mehdi's been one of the few mainstream journalists to thoroughly scrutinise and criticise it as well. Then he's allowed... Uh, back on air as host after that hiatus. He gets to interview Mark Regov, Regev, senior advisor to the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and former Israeli ambassador to the UK. Maybe he's the perfect guy for that because Regev, we've got to be honest, he's good at his job. Smooth talker, quick on his feet and very, very good at propaganda to cover for an onslaught which is murderously wiping out so many innocent Palestinian civilians and so many other horrors, of course, as well. Let's just have a listen to that interview as an example. It'll be good for the people of Gaza who deserve better than this terrible authoritarian well, <laughs> extreme Hamas regime. The people of Gaza are still alive. As I say, more than 11,000 people dead, reported dead, 4,000 children. I just want to pull up on the screen. Hamas. You say, yeah, Hamas's you say, numbers. You, Hamas's you, say numbers. Hamas's num you say Hamas's numbers. I should point out, just pull up on the screen. In the last two major Gaza conflicts, 2009 and 2014, the Israeli military's death dolls matched Hamas's health ministry death toll. So, and the UN human rights groups all agree that those numbers are credible. But look, your wider point is true. Can I challenge that? Will you allow me to challenge that, please? Can I just briefly, challenge that? Can, I'd briefly. like to challenge that. I'll try to be as brief as you are, sir. Uh, th those numbers are provided by Hamas. There's no independent verification. And secondly, more importantly, you have no idea how many of them are Hamas uh, terrorists, combatants, and how many are civilians. Hamas would have you believe that they're all civilians, that they're all children. And here we have to say something that isn't said enough. Hamas, until now, we're, we're destroying their military machine, and with that, we're eroding their control. But up until now, they've been in control of the Gaza Strip. And as a result, they control all the images coming out of Gaza. Have you seen one picture of a single dead Hamas terrorist in the fighting in Gaza? Not one. Is that yeah, by accident have, or is that because Hamas Mark, can control Hamas can Mark, control the information? You, you asked me a question and you Gaza. said you would be brief. I have I haven't, you're right, but I have seen lots of children with my own lying eyes being pulled from the rubble. Uh, because so they're the pictures Hamas wants you to see. Exactly. And also my because point, they're Mehdi. dead. They're Mark. the pictures also Hamas because, wants But they're also people no, that your government has uh, killed. You accept that, right? You've killed children, or do you deny no, that? No, I do not. I do not. I do not. First of all, you don't know how those people died, those children. Oh, wow. First of all, we don't want to see a we single do. child are... killed. So not long after that, he's fired. Well, I love you. I think it stinks. It's rightly caused an uproar. The left-wing democratic organiser, Walid Shahid, puts it in an important, I think, broader context, uh, when he tweeted, Between Biden sending weapons to Netanyahu, cancelling Mehdi Hassan's show, White House calling the squad repugnant, APAC a primary squad with millions of dollars and criminalizing non-violent student activists, some of those powerful Democrats in America are working overdrive to alienate young progressive voters. By the squad, of course, he means the progressive uh, Congress uh, bloc, including Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, um, Ilan Omar, and so on. As progressive author uh, Sarah uh, Kenzio puts it, referring to that interview with Mark Regev, from which he so brilliantly filleted the guy, they canceled Medias and for interviews like this, evidence-based and willing to challenge power. And it's doubtful he will be the only journalist pushed out for daring to practice journalism. Well, I think that prediction is safe, is safe in, 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 in its outlook, I'm afraid. As the US representative uh, progressive, Ro Khanna, put it, it is bad optics for MSNBC to cancel Mehdi Hassan's show right at a time when he's vocal for human rights in Gaza with a war ongoing. As a strong supporter of free speech, MSNBC owes the public an explanation for this decision. Why would they choose to do this now? Well, why, why indeed? As the Palestinian-American human rights lawyer Nora Erekat put it, MSNBC make this make sense. Media Sam's program has felt like an oasis on air and more needed than ever. His program with Mark Regev was a whole class on journalistic method. He should be amplified, not shut down. And again, park for politics, he's just very good at his job. And as Perry Bacon Jr., a journalist put it in the Washington Post, 
in a column. The cancellation of Mehdi Hassan's show is the latest in a series of recent moves by MSNBC that are pushing the network in the direction of being the television arm of the Democratic Party leadership, as opposed to a news outlet which holds upholds left-wing values and perspectives. The network should reverse this decision in Hassan and make clear that it embraces progressive criticism of President Biden and other Democratic leaders. Let's just put this in a broader context. There is a McCarthyite attempt to intimidate, harass, silence, and indeed sack those few mainstream voices who refuse to kowtow to pressure to back Israel's horrendous onslaught against the people of Gaza. Now, I wrote a column at the end of October headlined, As Gaza crumbles, those speaking up for innocent Palestinians are being silenced and sacked. Now, unfortunately, since then, things have only got considerably worse. There is immense pressure within media circles in Britain and the United States on those with a platform to stop speaking out about Gaza, Palestine, to stop exposing the truth about the Israeli onslaught. And elsewhere in Europe, I should say, that pressure must be resisted. It's so important that what happens to those like Mehdi doesn't lead to others censoring themselves for fear of their position. We have to speak louder. We have to be braver, more courageous, more outspoken. As it so happens, Mehdi is too talented not to have an extremely bright future. He's too big to fail. But I hope in the US progressives do mobilise and support behind Mehdi. We need this guy's voice. He is important. But it's also important that those of us who are dissenting voices, whether we have a public platform or we're private citizens speaking out, we all have a role. We've all got to stand together. We've all got to stick together. It's going to be a rough ride in a few in the next weeks and months ahead. Because so much horror is still to be unleashed against Gaza, and it's in the interest of apologists for this onslaught to silence all of our voices and stop speaking about these crimes. Please like, subscribe, do share this video. You can keep the show on the road on patreon.com forward slash owenjones84, and I'll speak to you very soon.